Um, and thank you for stopping by my channel, Healthy Living with Ms. Renee the Barber. So glad that you joined me. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for staying with me and supporting me during my weight loss journey. All right, now let's get it in. Let's get those housekeeping rules in. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share, comment, and don't forget, hit that like button. All right then, are you ready for your water? All right, now if you do not have your water, then put this video on pause. Go get your water, and when you return, we will be here. All right, now, do you have your water? All right then, let's take that squeak together. Alrighty then, so as you see what the title says, we're going to be talking about vitamin D. Now I'm going to break it down into four sections. I'm going to tell you my history regarding vitamin D, which is my story, right? And then we're going to talk about the history and some facts about vitamin D. We're also going to talk about the effects of vitamin D deficiency and then we're going to talk about the resources uh, to get vitamin D. All right, so let's get started. Let me begin. Let me take you back. Let me take you back just a few months ago when I started my weight loss journey. Um, as I mentioned to you at that time, and if you're not familiar, I'm going to post at least three videos, uh, boop, 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 they'll be right there together, okay, regarding my beginning story of my weight loss journey. That's day one, day two, and day three. And I think both of those, all three of those, I'm sorry, all three of those videos will tell you exactly where I am, what I'm feeling about my weight loss journey, and why I went to the doctor. Because... At the onset of my weight loss journey, it was important for me to receive medical attention, to have a documented history, a, a documented medical history of my weight loss journey. And so I went to my doctor. My doctor, of course, you know, her name is Dr. Judy. I chose Dr. Judy. I like Dr. Judy. We connect well. We have built solid professional patient relationship. And I'm thankful for that. And I believe that if there's anyone that is on a weight loss journey, I believe that you need to seek medical attention from your doctor. I mean, especially if you're working and you have medical benefits, I believe it's just important so that your medical doctor will be your partner in your weight loss journey. So let me tell you my story. You know, I went to, like I said, Dr. Judy, when I first started my weight loss journey because I wanted that medical documented history. And it was my intent to continue to go every so often after losing a set amount of weight. But when it came to like November and December where it became a struggle due to, due to the holiday season, it just seemed like I lost motivation to go to the doctor. So. I wasn't losing the 20 pounds a month or the 15 pounds a month as I thought I would. So I just didn't go to the doctor. It was my intent and um, come spring, yeah, I will go. But as it may be, I was led to my doctor because of a situation outside of my weight loss journey. I had an incident uh, over the last, let's say, couple weeks. That's why I haven't really posted a lot of videos. But over the last couple weeks, I had an incident. I had an injury. And I went to the urgent care doctor. Let's just say the urgent care doctor, okay? And the urgent care doctor said to me, Oh, just put some ice on it and everything will be okay in the morning. Well, I followed the instructions. And about four or five days went by and my hand was like throbbing. 
My injury was throbbing. It was hurting. I was almost in tears. More pain than the injury itself. So I decided then I need to see my doctor, Dr. Judy, the one I've built a relationship with, the one that knows my history. So I made an appointment with Dr. Judy. And I sat there and I told her what was going on. And she said, let me look closer into your files. And she was looking into her database on the computer. My computer's sitting right here. She was looking into her computer. And then she said, let me, let me back up. Because when I first started my weight loss journey, she ordered a lot of tests. And I had them all completed. But I got feedback on some, but I didn't get feedback on others. But you know what they say, no news is good news. So I, I didn't pay it any attention. So then when she was looking into her computer, did she said, did anybody call you about your lack or your deficiency in vitamin D? And I was like, no. She said, your vitamin D levels are so low, they are alarming. And she said, they are so low that I am going to have to aggressively treat you to bring you back to a normal level. Now, all along, I, I was thinking, what? What were the signs in my mind? What, what were the signs of lacking vitamin D? Yeah, okay, we know that vitamin D plays a part in our bones and our teeth. But what, you know, there were times I get drowsy during the day, lack of energy. That could have been due to, you know, I'm thinking to myself, that could have been due to I'm really busy. Okay, now I've always shared with you guys I'm in my sixth decade of life. Well, that's aging, right? I, I associate muscle pain and bone aching part of the aging process so I didn't really think that I had a lack of vitamin D or a deficiency and when I think back about in the beginning when I used to talk to you guys about how I was craving mushrooms all the time before I started my weight loss journey I never craved mushrooms like that I did several videos on how to prepare mushrooms I, I mean as as recent as like a month ago. Well, that's one way to obtain vitamin D. My mind, my body was saying, you need some source of vitamin D. And I wasn't, as I, I, and I say this on my videos all the time. Listen to your body. I didn't know why I was craving vitamin, I didn't know why I was craving uh, mushrooms. I just thought that was, um, a good source in replace of meat but my mo my body was saying you need some mushrooms <laughs> okay so now I'm back on path okay I'm back on path and I'm thankful that I went to the doctor because my whole thing is becoming healthy and a benefit to becoming healthy is losing weight I want a quality life I've told you I want to spend time my vision is to spend time with my grandchildren and so in order to do that just a quality life with my grandchildren in order to do that of course I gotta be healthy so that is my story about deficient uh, the lack of vitamin D now had I heard of this before yeah, a couple years ago, I remember complaining about my bones were aching after I had walked maybe three or four miles. But I just thought that was part of the course of exercising at my age. And I remember um, someone at my job saying, uh, Renee, I think you need some probably some vitamin D and you can get that over the counter at the grocery store. And then I remember a friend of mine who's a nurse said, well, you got to be careful with that because you can have too much vitamin D and it can create 
an adverse effect. Okay, so you got to be careful. You got to go to your doctor. So I end up at my doctor now. And now I'm back on course. Uh, I still have a ways to go. But I'm sure now with the treatment that I'm receiving, that my vitamin D levels will be normal soon. All right, so now let's go over some quick facts and history of vitamin D. Now, if you're as my age, or you could be a little younger, but have you ever heard of the term rickets? Rickets actually refers to children. It's a uh, softening of the bones. But for adults, uh, the term would be osteomalacia. Before I go any further, I want to say I am not a medical doctor. I am not a health expert. I'm an individual who wants to become healthy. This is my story, how vitamin D deficiency affected me, and I'd like to share it with you. But if you have multiple signs and symptoms of what I'm going to share with you, you may need to make an appointment with your doctor. And as I mentioned, if you're working and you have medical insurance, you have no excuse then not to visit your doctor. You're paying into, medical insurance is expensive, and you're paying into it and not seeking medical advice, you know, think about it. All right, so let's talk about the term rickets. As I mentioned, yes, it does apply more towards children. In the 1930s, during the Industrial Revolution, there was a high incidence or an epidemic of rickets. Because during that time, there was more child labor. And that meant that a lot of children, was, they were not getting the exposure to sunlight, which is a source to get more vitamin D. And so at that time, during the 30s, is when the government put in place where commercial companies could put vitamin D into certain foods. Vitamin D into milk, into cereals, and, and things of that nature. Since that time, the number of incidents of rickets have decreased. Now, how does vitamin D work? Well, vitamin D aids other nutrients and vitamins to be absorbed into your body. Studies show the deficiency of vitamin D affects 40% of the U.S. population. That means that every two out of every five people have experienced vitamin D deficiency. That's an alarming rate, don't you think? I mean, let's just say I found that on Google. Studies show that 40% of the U.S. population here in America, that's the U.S. where I live, okay? 40% of the U.S. population suffers from vitamin D deficiency. Now, let's say that they're, they're inaccurate. That number is inaccurate. Let's just say there are only 50% of that total, okay? So that means that, what, 20% of, of, uh, of the U.S. population suffer from a vitamin D deficiency? That means that every one out of every five people <laughs> that means one out of every five people that you know, that I know, suffer from vitamin D deficiency. So when you see this video, go to work tomorrow or go out in your community and ask. Just ask about five people. Ask them, do they have any of those signs or symptoms? Or have they ever heard of vitamin D deficiency? See what the response is. Okay, now, let's look at some of the signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Some of the signs, and these are just general, but some of the signs could be sweating, extreme sweating, 
with little exertion. Nagging, bone pain, nagging, bone aches, and muscle pain. Chronic pain, frequently sick due to your weak immune system. Energy level is low. Caffeine won't help you. Fatigue. Talk to your doctor. Injury slow to heal. Now we know that can be related to several things, but one thing it can be related to is deficiency in vitamin D. Loss of hair. Now Google says that on an average, people lose between 50 to 100 hairs a day. So anything more than that, hey, you need to go see your doctor. If you suffer from depression or moodiness, vitamin D plays an important role in the balancing of your moods. It is the joints and the bones that we initially feel the symptoms of the deficiency of vitamin D. Aching bones. Now as I mentioned, it, that could be due to age. It could be due to a lot. But vitamin D also affects your bones. If you're exercising and you have muscle pain, extreme muscle pain, you need to seek medical advice. And Dr. Judy informed me that women my age, postmenopausal, are at greater risk of vitamin D deficiency. Another sign or symptom of vitamin D deficiency is peeling nails, like fingernails, or brittle nails. Due to the lack or the deficiency of vitamin D, there are numerous symptoms. All right, now let's talk about the resources to get more vitamin D. Now some of the resources in getting more uh, vitamin D is through, of course, our foods. We also can get it through sunshine and supplements. So let's look at some of the foods that we can get vitamin D. All right, we can get vitamin D through, I'm looking at my computer here, foods that are rich in, uh, foods that are rich in vitamin D are fatty fish, orange juice, soy milk or milk, vitamin D, oysters, shrimp. Now those, that's not a complete list. So you have to do your own research on that, okay? Because my diet the diet that I'm on, my lifestyle, is more of a plant-based lifestyle. So if you follow me or my videos, then you understand or know that I have a lifestyle that's more plant-based. And just like my lifestyle, vegans like myself struggle to maintain a sufficient amount of vitamin D. Now, what was my vitamin D prior to my diet? I don't know. I have to uh, try to find a documented medical history prior to when I started my weight loss journey. Now let's talk about the sun. Vitamin D is also known as the sunshine vitamin. We should get at least two to three days a week of sunlight. Now exposure times do vary according to your age, where you live, the season, time of day, and it is known to be more common problem in the winter months that people will have a, a problems with the deficiency of vitamin D because of the lack of sunshine, especially in the northern hemisphere. Older individuals have been known to move to warmer parts of the United States, like Florida, However, as you age, your body 
does not process and absorb sunshine as if you when you were younger so you may still um, have difficulty absorbing the sunshine and also an issue with absorbing sunshine is when we wear the sunscreen which helps which does not um, allow the sunshine to penetrate the skin which helps to produce the vitamin D Other ways to obtain more vitamin D is through supplements. Okay, here are my closing thoughts on it. Ms. Renee the Barber, here's my closing thoughts on vitamin D deficiency and what do you need to do to battle this issue. Of course, what I'm going to say to you, go to the doctor. Don't self-diagnose. Go straight to your doctor for medical attention. All right, so we're gonna close this video out at this time. Thank you for joining me. And uh, as always, I hope that you had a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And here, here's the healthy living.